Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we are making the most exquisite carbonara. Yes people, it doesn't get better than a nice creamy cheesy pasta and we are doing it the most authentic way and that is the Roman way. All the way from the city of Rome comes the beautiful carbonara. When you eat carbonara in Italy, man it is one of a kind i'm telling you it is one of the best dishes made in italy and today i'm going to show you step by step how to make that beautiful carbonara at home so let's get to it so carbonara needs a few ingredients but the technique used to make carbonara is really important and you have to pay attention to that technique because it is really easy to mess up this dish and you do not want that you want to have beautiful carbonara made at home easy peasy and i'm going to show you the best way to do that so firstly i have a pot of water boiling on my stove this is for making that pasta when making carbonara you use the dry pasta so pasta bought at your supermarket you do not use fresh pasta when it comes to making carbonara and the main reason for this is that you want al dente pasta al dente is a very different texture when it comes to pasta you got a very chewy bite it's not that soft overcooked pasta and i have never experienced this anywhere else except for italy so there is a way of making al dente pasta and it's really simple it is the time you have to pay attention to when that pasta is in the water so we're going to be tasting that pasta all the time after about five to six minutes it's all dependent on how much of time you needed to cook your pasta coming back to the pasta it is important to have high quality dried pasta now i'm talking about pasta made with semolina these pastas are normally imported from italy it's important to find authentic italian pasta at your supermarket Roma pasta is a very high quality pasta that you can use at home and you can find these in any supermarket in south africa fair city is a very popular one used in italy unfortunately you do not get it in south africa it is one of the highest quality dried pasta used and it is purely made from semolina so make sure you use a high quality dried pasta and if you're in south africa please no fatties and monies no barilla pasta stick to high quality or pasta that uses semolina as the main ingredient now in the rumo i do not have spaghetti spaghetti is the preferred pasta used for making carbonara i have a brand called granoro which is also popular here in south africa in the supermarket the next ingredient I have is pancetta. Now, pancetta is an alternative to guanciale, which is the pork cheek. And unfortunately, it is really difficult to find guanciale. The Italians cure the pork guanciale for a few months, and that gives it a beautiful piece of meat to use for carbonara. So, if you cannot sauce guanciale then pancetta is your next best thing you can also use bacon if you cannot find pancetta but today we're using both ingredients pancetta and some beautiful bacon pieces the next ingredient is cheese you need some beautiful italian cheese there's nothing better than parmigiano reggiano or pecorino romano you can use one of the two or like me today i'm going to be using parmigiano and pecorino it's just going to take the dish to a whole nother level too nice man the smell in this pecorino right here gotta love proper italian cheese and the final ingredient is obviously eggs you need to make a sauce where we're going to throw in that parmigiano or that pecorino you need to get about three eggs this serves around one to two people and we're going to use about 200 grams of pasta so it's all dependent on how much you're serving on the day the more people the more eggs you would need and today we're going to be using three eggs and just the yolks some people use the whole eggs but in the modern italian cuisine only yolks are used and that gives it a more creamy texture to the sauce that's going to make beautiful carbonara so we cover the ingredients it's time to get cooking i've got that water on a good summer i mean it's boiling really nicely and it's time to add in that pasta but before i do that i'm going to take my pancetta and my bacon bits and throw it into a dry frying pan and let that simmer in its own fat that's going to be released and you do not want to add any oil in this pan you want that fat from that pork and that's going to give you beautiful crispy bits in your carbonara so all you need to do is take your pancetta okay 
and chop this up into some nice pieces. So we have some beautiful pancetta nicely chopped. Now let's cut some bacon. So we have some beautiful bacon, we have some beautiful pancetta. We are done with the meat. So it's time to add in our pasta, but before we do that, we need some salt in that water. So add in some good salt in here, and now we grab in about 200 grams of pasta. Okay, this is spaghetti. You can also use spaghettoni, which is a larger spaghetti. Whatever you find in store, high quality dried pasta that is, and you're good to go. Beautiful semolina pasta, go straight into that pot. And we can start timing that. I mean, this pasta, they say six to seven minutes for al dente, but you need to keep tasting it after that five to six minutes and see how much more is needed. You don't want to overcook pasta. You don't want pasta to be breaking and all soggy. You want you to have a nice bite to it. And it's just when it reaches that point of softness that you take it out. So let that pasta cook. A beautiful pork goes in. You want that pork to sit there for a few minutes just to get nice color on them. So I have the pasta in, I have my pork getting cooked. It's time to start with that beautiful sauce. It's really simple, just two ingredients, eggs and cheese. So all we need are the yolks. So you can get rid of those whites, really simple. Take your egg, bang it on a flat surface. Get the yolk out, one yolk down. You can also use your thumb by holding that yolk and letting that whites come out. Okay, really simple. And our third egg. So once we have our three yolks in our bowl, it's time to add in some beautiful Parmigiano, Parmesan. So around 100 grams Parmesan goes in. If you have beautiful Pecorino Romano at home, which is a also a beautiful hard cheese. Just give it some extra love with some pecorino. Man, this is going to be too nice. Now, parmigiano and pecorino are very salty cheese, so you also need to make sure that you watch your salt when adding it into your pasta. You don't want an over salty dish. So we have our yolks, we have our cheese. It's not time to add in some beautiful black pepper. So we close the grinder up so you get some small, rounded pepper and not too big peppercorns. B-E-A beautiful, man it smells so good. Now let's give this baby a good mix. You want that type of thickness. That's going to be the base for the sauce. Okay, as you can see, too nice. Our sauce is done. It's now time to check on that pasta. Grab some pasta and let's see what it tastes like. Still a bit hard on the inside, so we've got a few minutes more to go. Got a beautiful pork, and as you can see, getting some nice color on that. And man, that's gonna create so much of flavor in that carbonara. I mean, how easy is this dish so far? You just need some beautiful pork, some high quality dry pasta, and some beautiful cheese, parmigiano reggiano or pecorino romano. I mean, a dish like this in Italy costs around 10 to 12 euros and you can make this for a third of that price at home. So why not make this every week and enjoy beautiful carbonara at home? Almost there, it looks like it'll be just a minute more and we are good to go. As I mentioned, you want that al dente, you want a little bit chewy bite, you don't want it to be too soft. So we can turn that heat off, it's just gonna keep the pasta a little bit moist and we want to use that pasta water, so do not throw that water away. We can take this out, keep that one side. What you need to do now is grab some of that pasta water and throw it into your egg mix. As you can see, it's now turning into a smooth sauce and that is what you want that pasta water to do. So take your pork, your beautiful pancetta or bacon, throw this baby in. Take the little bit of oil in here and drop this out. You don't want too much of grease in this pan. Give this a good mix, okay? And now we take our beautiful pasta and we throw it right inside there. So pasta goes in, 
straight into your egg mix and your beautiful pork okay don't worry about getting some pasta water in there it's all the better that pasta water is going to make that sauce even more smooth so you want that beautiful smooth texture now we give this a good mix as you can see it is looking amazing man that's exactly what you want so once you got this nicely mixed it's time to add this back into your pan okay you don't want to put any heat in here because you don't want those eggs to start cooking so in that pan that has a little bit of that bacon and that pancetta greasiness you want the pasta to absorb all of that okay take just a teeny bit of pasta water throw that in that bowl let's kind of clean that bowl up with all that beautiful sauce okay the pasta water is still nice and hot it's removing all of that sauce and get all of this out okay god damn look at this ah looks too good people too good man you want that silky smooth sauce that comes from that egg and that parmigiano yo man and now we're gonna top this off with some more pecorino cheese or parmesan so pecorino in some beautiful parmesan give that a good mix Add in just a teeny bit more water, okay? That's gonna help with that sauce, make it all smooth. You don't want it too thick, you want it nice and creamy, okay? Man, this looks so good. Add in some beautiful pepper, black pepper. Grab your bowl and let's get some pasta in. Man. Look at that, people. Beautiful carbonara. And there we have it, people. Beautiful carbonara made at home. How easy was that? Exquisito. God damn. So, let's give it a taste, shall we? Man. Bon appetito. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, that is so creamy. That cheese, that pecorino romano, that parmigiano reggiano. I mean, if you have one of the cheeses, you're still good to go. All I'm asking for is high quality dry pasta that is imported from Italia. And that would make the most delicious carbonara at home. Man, this is good, people. Damn. Mm. And unfortunately for those that do not eat pork, you cannot call it a carbonara because carbonara is a pork dish and it is made with a beautiful pork cheek, the guanciale, and it's just not carbonara without pork. So maybe it's time to start eating some good pork people. I'm just joking. But this is an awesome dish made at home and how easy was that? Just four ingredients and you got the most delicious, authentic Italian dish. In a few minutes so i hope you enjoyed that video if you did give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button on the next episode i'm making beautiful amatriciana a tomato based pasta also very popular in italy and man it's all about that technique and the flavor profile so make sure you hit the notification bell and subscribe because you do not want to miss out on that video anyways i will see you on the next one